Hey there, John Morris here. I'm a developer here at Wishlist Products and a blogger over at johnmorrisonline.com. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to get a list of levels. And I'm gonna talk about a couple different ways that you can do that. So we're obviously gonna talk about internal and external requests. And then I'm also gonna show you a filter that's available uh, to help make things a little cleaner when you're building your applications. So what I've done here is I've just set up some code and I'm doing this just right in uh, the theme functions file so I'm using the WordPress 2013 theme I'm in the functions file and um, I have wishlist member installed and activated so that's about the only real setup I have the only other thing I've done is you'll notice I'm using some constants here for the API URL and API key here that's just mainly because those are to uh, an actual site so I'm just kinda keeping those secret but uh, other than that, that's really the only setup. So first we'll just cover the external request. And if you've worked with the API in the past, this is probably something that uh, you're familiar with. Or you may have used this before. Um, so again, this is pretty straightforward. Usually if you look at the documentation, the API documentation, uh, the first thing that you do is you require the WLM API.php file. Now, when you're doing this in a plugin or a theme functions file with the latest versions of Wishlist Member, you don't need to do that because that file is already included and those methods are going to be available. So you'll see here, I'm not actually requiring the file because, again, it's already available. So I can just go ahead and instantiate a new uh, instance of the WM API class, which is what I've done here. So again, passing in the API URL and the API key, I'm setting my return format to PHP and I'm making a pretty simple request to get levels. So again, API get and then we put in our resource which is slash levels. We unserialize that response and then down here you can see I'm printing the response. So if we head over to the site that this is on, you can see that this here is our response. And I'll go ahead and refresh this just so you can see one thing I want you to notice here is the time that it takes for this request to process. Now, that's not necessarily a ton of time, but this is also isn't necessarily a bunch of levels either. Uh, so when you're talking about getting levels, that may not be as big of a deal. However, when you talk about getting a list of members, if you have thousands of members, then that could end up taking quite a long time. So. Uh, again, that's this is using the external request, and this is why I'll constantly be pushing you to using the internal method uh, if possible. Now, in this particular instance, I'm set up on my local host, and I'm making a request to an external site. So, in this case, I would have to use the inter external request uh, method in order to access these. Uh, in order to access the information from that site. However, if you're building a plugin where you're going to be working with the local instance or the local setup of Wishlist member, then you definitely want to be using the internal request. Okay, so you can see here that what we get back is an array, and in that array we have, uh, you know, a couple different kind of, it's a multi dimensional array, so we have a couple different levels here. And so we're going to get a success. Uh, we're going to get a success element back or a success response back whether it was successful or not. Uh, if it's not, this will be a zero and then you won't get a levels uh, dimension here. You'll get an error message. And so you can kind of use that to handle um, errors that you may have and, and you know set up your error code to handle different instances. So we're, we're, again, we have the levels. Inside that we have the level dimension which has the actual array of levels and for each level we're getting the ID the name and then the the more element here and essentially what that tells us is this is what we would if we want more information about this particular level this is the resource that we would have to uh, query for in order to get that uh, that information so if we go back to the code our resource here would actually be this more element here if we wanted spe more specific information about this particular membership level. So that makes it easy for you to be able to programmatically 
um, drill down essentially and get more information about membership levels. So you don't actually, depending on what your code's doing, you don't necessarily need to know what the um, what the the membership level SKU or ID is because you can get a get a list of all the levels. Then you can programmatically um, get more information about a specific level. Again, it depends what your code's trying to do, but that's essentially the point of this right here. So you can see we just have a simple list of all of our different membership levels, and then of course we always get back this supported verbs. So that uh, just tells us what uh, this resource will support. So we can get the levels, or we can post, and um, we can add new levels essentially. Okay, and we'll talk about some of that stuff in later tutorials. All right, so that's the external method. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to comment this out. And we're going to take a look at the internal method. So this is all that's required to get levels using the internal method. You notice that it's obviously a lot less code. Um, it, the request also is going to run a lot quicker. So um, definitely if you're, again, if you're making requests to the same install, which is normally, most of the time that's what you're going to be doing. Um, your plugin or, or your theme that you're working with is going to be installed and querying the wishlist member install on the same WordPress site. So you're not making requests to some sort of external site you'll definitely want to use these internal methods. This is going to be a lot easier for you to code. There's not as much coding you have to do and the requests are going to run a lot faster. Right, so the function we use is WM API get levels and if we go ahead and come over here and take a look now I'm getting my internal levels so I'm not getting these from the uh, this external site and so you'll notice that now I have a different set of levels and you know that particular page load may or may not have been faster than the one before but uh, again overall these requests are just going to run a lot faster because they're not using HTTP they're just using internal PHP so again it'll just be a lot faster so you see you get back the exact same information um, here so you have your levels you have your success you have your levels you have your array you have all the exact same information you have your supported verbs so it's the exact same information back, it's just a lot easier and a lot faster. All right, so again, there's not a lot really necessarily to talk about there because that's it's really easy to use and, it, and that's kind of the point. So the last thing that I'm gonna uh, have you take a look at is something that you may not have seen before because I know it's not something that um, necessarily a lot of people uh, work with or maybe even understand, but the the get levels functions or methods they actually have filters available okay so uh, instead of calling WM API get levels what you can do is you see down here I'm calling WMI API the levels and essentially what this does is it calls get levels but when it returns it it, it uh, applies a filter to it and so you can then create a filter to filter the output now the advantage of doing that is it allows you to separate your code your display code from your your service code or your code that's actually doing the work so it helps keep things cleaner so I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute but let's just go ahead and take a look at the difference here so again if I come over here and I refresh you'll notice that instead of getting an array I'm now actually getting an unordered list okay again you can make this anything this is just what I made it for this particular demo and so if we look at how that's happening you will notice that I'm adding a filter and the filter is WM API the levels and then I have my callback function which is WI filter levels and I'm filtering the levels here so this callback function is gonna get the exact same array that you would get if you were to call WMI get level WMAPI get levels and then you see that I'm just essentially going through I'm drilling down to the actual array of levels that I need I'm running a for each loop and I'm just doing a simple output in an unordered list of the level names and then I'm returning that output and what that does is that filter changes then how WMAPI 
the level shows up. So to show you that, if I were to remove this filter, and we come back over here and take a look at this, what you're gonna see is that if there's no filter applied, it just returns the standard array. But by applying the filter, I can change what the output of this function is. Now, that may not immediately seem like uh, of much value, but again, what that allows you to do is it allows you to separate the code that actually does all the work from the code that you're, you're putting somewhere to display it. So an example of that would be, let's say for example, you wanna do something with levels on your home page. Well, the, the theme template file for the home page is index.php, or it could be home.php, but in most themes it's index.php. Now, if you were to just use this up here, the WM API get levels, what you would do, let, let's just say you want to display a list of all, all the different levels for some reason. What you would do is you would call this function and then you, all the code that's in here, you would actually output that, you would actually write that in your theme template file. Now, that's okay, you can do that, but what happens, depending on how complicated your code is, or depending on how much, how many different things you're doing, it can start to get a little bit uh, complex in that that uh, template file, and you can start to have a whole lot of code in there. Okay, and, and typically template files, you wanna try to keep as clean as possible. So what the filter does, is it allows you to, instead of putting all of that code in your theme template file, you can just call this right here. You could just, in fact, you could just echo WM API the levels in your theme template file. And then with this filter, all of this work here could be put in your functions file. It could be put, it could be put somewhere else so it's not cluttering up your theme template file. Uh, and you could still get the exact same display that you want on the home page, but you don't have to have all of that code in the actual template file. So again, it allows you to separate out your code, the code that's doing all the work versus the code that is in a specific place where you want it to actually display. And so that's that's important for themes. That's also important for plugins. It helps keep keeps things cleaner uh, and a little bit easier for you to manage. Okay, so that uh, is the last uh, part of getting levels with the wishlist member API is the filter that's available. So those are the different ways that you can get levels using the API. Hopefully you found that uh, helpful. And again, uh, as always, if you have different things that you would like to learn with the API, by all means, let me know. Um, definitely want to do tutorials on the things that you want to learn. Also, let me know what you thought of this tutorial. Do you have questions? Uh, is there something more that you would like to know about this. Have you used it before and you have suggestions that you think would be helpful for, for others developing using uh, the API in this particular set of methods? Uh, let us know, we'd love to hear from you. Again, thanks for watching this video. I'll talk to you next time.